Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com and welcome to episode number 32 of Boat Test Reports. This week we're taking a break from our normal format and we'll devote our whole program to what is clearly going to be the next big thing in marine propulsion, electric power. Along the way, we'll look at some exciting boats built by the oldest continuously operating boat builder in America, which is building some of the coolest, most modern boats on the water. There's no arguing that there's a distinct rise of electric boats. If you're one of those people that think the internal combustion engine will never go away in your lifetime, we urge you to join us for the next few minutes. In July, the California Air Resources Board, better known as CARB, proposed a transition to all electric trucks by 2045 in the state of California. As usual, we expect the federal government to follow suit. Between now and then, CARB has set out a timeline of reduced CO2 and nitrous oxide emissions for truck engines. By the mid-2030s, from 40% of heavy-duty trucks and 75% of light-duty trucks are to be all electric powered in the state. In Europe, new EU standards call for a reduction by half of current car and van emissions by 2030. BMW, Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi, Mercedes, and Volkswagen Group have all announced plans to sell 15% to 30% electrified vehicles by 2025. The European Commission is also inevitably moving towards what it calls zero-level emissions. Clearly, the handwriting is on the wall, and it's only a matter of perhaps a couple of decades, that internal combustion engines will be largely unavailable for marine use, much less for automobiles and trucks. Now that's why Volvo Penta, which is the largest supplier of diesel engines to the marine industry, has made a firm commitment to electric marine propulsion. Volvo introduced its first all-electric sail drive at the 2019 Con Yachting Festival, working with catamaran builder Fontaine Peugeot, incorporating twin 15 kW motors with the drives into a Lucia 40 model. In late spring of next year, a Volvo Penta hybrid-powered crew transfer vessel is scheduled to be launched in the UK, using five state-of-the-art Volvo DHN sets supplying power to Danfoss Editron electric machines in the vessel. They've already proved their reliability in 27 river ferries in Bangkok. These powerful units are called machines because they can be used both as motors and generators. In the new crew transport vessel, they're linked to a Volvo Penta IPS drive unit, this boat will have quad IPS drives, two connected to Volvo Penta D13 diesel engines, and two connected to the Danfoss Editron electric motors. Hodgdon Yachts in Southport, Maine was founded in 1816 and is said to be the longest continuously operating boatyard in America. But just because Hodgdon is old doesn't mean it's behind the times. Quite the opposite, in fact. It is the go-to yard for cutting-edge building technology. This versatile yard built world-class ocean racing yachts like Jim Clark's 100-foot Comanche, which set the west to east transatlantic record by a full day, crossing in five days, 14 hours, 21 minutes, and 25 seconds, at an average speed of 21.4 knots. It also builds motorboats like the classic 80-foot commuter Liberty, which harkens back to the age of wooden boats and iron men. But beneath that varnished teak and exquisite joinery work is high-tech. Now, Hodgdon has teamed with Italy's Vita Super Power to offer its yacht tenders with full electric power. The tenders were designed by Michael Peters in 2011 when Steven Spielberg asked for a pair to shuttle guests to and from his 282-foot superyacht Seven Seas. Hodgdon now offers 10 tenders and the motors are coupled to dual-prop stern drives. Its two largest models, the 10.5-meter forward helm and the 12-meter aft helm, will be available with electric propulsion systems from Vita. Now, some people have always wanted to take electrical power one step further and have a boat powered by the sun. On May 8, 2007, the Spartan Swiss-built Sun 21 completed the first transatlantic crossing on solar power alone. Starting in Basel, Switzerland, the vessel made a 7,000-mile voyage by way of the Caribbean to New York City, and most of it at three knots. But the major credit for being pioneers in electrical power in large livable cruising yachts goes to Austrians Michael and Heike Kohler. After college, they spent 23 years cruising 75,000 miles around the world in both conventional sailboats and powerboats, and discovered some of the problems with both. Power boats had high fuel costs, mechanical problems with engines, noises, fumes, vibration, and emissions issues. 
Sailboats often encountered contrary wind, too much or non-existent winds, and they needed constant rigging and maintenance and were far more work, and they still needed an engine. The Colas came to the conclusion that solar power was the answer and set to work. After four years of research, they built the Solar Wave 46 in 2009 in a German yard. It was an ocean-going yacht which primarily used solar energy not only for actual propulsion, but also to provide power through an inverter to all household appliances on board, including a refrigerator, freezer, a washer-dryer, and much more. Starting in the spring of 2010 in Germany, Heike and Michael sailed the vessel down the Danube to the Black Sea, the Aegean, and Mediterranean, then into the ocean. But theirs was not the only solar-powered boat to start a circumnavigation that year. The 101-foot, 15 million euro, high-tech, German-financed Turinor Planet Solar set out on March 10th. Because of her size and design, she captured the headlines wherever she went. This vessel had nearly 6,000 square feet of solar panels and carried 8.5 tons of lithium-ion batteries, powering two electric motors. She is the largest solar-powered boat ever built, and it completed its circumnavigation on May 2012 after 584 days of sailing. Needless to say, Planet Solar sucked the oxygen out of every harbor she visited. Over the course of five years, without much fuss, the Kohlers logged a 15,000-mile circumnavigation of their own, taking long holidays and flying back and forth from Austria. They proved the concept, and afterwards, Silent Yachts was born, and the Kohlers have never looked back. Now that they were in business with a production yacht, once again they had to prove the concept. And this was done in 2018 with solar production boat to cross the Atlantic. Let's hear from Captain Ufuk Turkez. We start for our trip uh, from Spain, Cartagena. And then uh, our first step was in Canary Islands. And after then we have to continue to Cabo Verde. It was our plan to go across the ocean to Barbados. Uh, we were four person on board when we are crossing the ocean. It takes totally to cross the ocean from Spain until Barbados. It takes 34 days non-stop uh, uh, day and night cruising, which is we did like 17 days plus 17 days to Barbados. It was in February, so we had like always uh, rain and cloudy weather about one week for seven days so we have to use a generator more than normal like 30 40 knots wind between eight ten meter waves behind us so that was the the, the worst situation for us but nothing's happened everything was great we arrived uh, up where they without any problem during the time we always using everything like a home style everything what you need on board like a dishwasher washing machine like a, the hot water boilers and we always cooking with the microwave oven as well the induction that's the thing this comes all from the sun power actually if you don't have a good condition in the daytime like cloudy weather like 50 60 percent cloudy weather in the during the day it's still okay for us to uh, the sun power we only use in the night time three hours generator, three hours stop. That means three hours on, three hours off in the night time because we don't have enough sun in the day. Solar power on the silent Yatsu was harvested by 30 solar panels which supplied 28 lithium ion batteries, each having a storage capacity of five kilowatt hours. They powered twin 135 kW electric bus motors. The advantages of a solar powered cruiser include unlimited range, maintenance free motors, no noise fumes or vibration, no carbon or NOx emissions, no heat buildup, smaller engine rooms, and reduced fire hazard. Silent Yachts is now building four production models, 55, 60, 80, and an 80 Tridec in two yards, one located in Italy, the other in Thailand. It's built 11 solar-powered cats since 2018, and we're told it has another 20 under construction. The latest design is the Silent 80, which is under construction and scheduled to be launched in 2021. Let's hear from the founder and CEO of Silent Yacht. Welcome. My name is Michael and I'm the CEO and founder of Silent Yachts. The goal of this video is to give you an insight into the energy generation and consumption of the solar power drivetrain on board of a Silent Yacht, based on the silhouette of a Silent 80. Please be advised that the location of all the individual components in the video has been simplified for visual reasons. 
The solar panels located on the roof charge the large battery banks on board. The energy stored is not only used for propulsion, but also powers all the household and other appliances such as the navigational system, the water toys and the tender, the air conditioning and the kitchen including fridge and water maker. Next, Michael describes a theoretical day cruising on the Silent 80 starting just after dinner and sundown. Now note the four radial dials on the screen that show the time, boat speed, kilowatt usage and battery bank charge. Keep an eye on them to see what happens. After enjoying dinner and experiencing the true beauty of what we call a silent sunset, it's time to get going. You set off for a night cruise to your next destination. As the lithium batteries have been storing energy all day, you have sufficient energy to cruise through the night in order to reach your next bay. The morning dawn welcomes you at your destination of choice. Fellow sailors in the bay may show signs of surprise and astonishment as you arrived in complete silence. While having breakfast, your silent yacht anchors in the bay, recharging the batteries with the help of the rising sun. After a relaxing morning on board, it's time to set off. You've reserved a table at your favorite restaurant located about 50 miles away on the next island. While the batteries have enough charge left to power you towards your destination, you choose to make use of the generator on board. Hereby it's important to know that the generator is not directly connected to the drive shaft, it recharges the batteries instead. This makes sure you can sustain higher speeds and reach the restaurant on time regardless of the current weather conditions. However, your experience still remains silent as the sound of the running generator cannot be heard during faster cruising speeds. After having enjoyed your favorite meal with your loved ones, you spend a relaxing afternoon on board. While the sun powers all the luxurious amenities of your silent yacht to keep you and your family comfortable, you create simple yet beautiful moments with the ones that really matter. And once the sun has set, nothing feels better than well-deserved sleep with a clean conscience. The pace of electrification of boats propulsion is picking up. Prices of lithium ion batteries have come way down, solar panels are becoming cheaper and better, high torque electric motors used in buses all over the world have lowered the prices of powerful compact motors and made them readily available for marine use. If it is any indication, the Green Line series of hybrid boats has been particularly popular on boat tests for the last several years. We expect interest in clean energy to only grow. And that's our show for this week. Be sure to sign up for our daily newsletter and please keep the photos and videos and comments coming. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water under the sun.